Hello, welcome Everything to the Receipt Podcast. <laughs> this so week much. brought to you by Movement Watches. Woo! Oh, and Rooster Teeth, apparently. This episode. This episode. Right. So we Not got the, this week. This episode brought. Did I say this week? I don't know. Yeah, we got the bonus. All oh, right, because normally I, that would be correct, normally, but not this week, not that first would week. Be correct. I'm but Gus. This time. I'm Gavin. I'm Barbara. I'm Bernie. I'm Gus. So I'm we Bernie. got the first bonus one sponsored. Well, it's it's podcast four twenty one, so it's technically yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm just impressed. It's not. Yeah, I mean it's a bonus, but it's still Why don't we explain what canonical. We're doing, first of all, this is a bonus episode of the podcast that we're doing for the first week. Yes. So normally we do one episode of Rooster Teeth podcast per week at an hour and a half on Mondays. We are now recording a second episode for an hour on Thursday. Yes. In celebration of first week, which leads up to our anniversary on April first. Yes. How many the years? Fourteen. Fourteen. Years. Jeff tried to say fifteen years this morning. What the fuck's yeah, we're going into our fifteenth year, so it's real easy because that's a big milestone to start saying fifteen. But yeah. It's also RBB season fifteen. Yeah, that's always which confuses some people. Well, you start with one. Yeah, well, that I think that's what's confusing to some yeah. people. It's like it's our fourteenth year, but fifteenth season. Sorry, dude. <laughs> Fucking hate that. Last time. I know you did. <laughs> <laughs> Provided me with a by Microsoft. So uh, oh. I definitely didn't forget. About Gavin, this. completely it's forgot. It's your calendar, man. It gives me a reminder ten minutes before. What am I going to do in ten minutes? Let me look at this event right now. I, I always I'm pretty look sure at you're full of shit. My plan for the whole day. <laughs> Alert one hour before. Didn't Alert time of event. D bollocks. You didn't respond to the calendar invite. Well, it's if in you had responded one hour before at time of event. Gavin's I got an alert busy. an hour before. So that didn't put it... Right, so if I don't respond, it's still in there, but it only sets it at ten minutes before? It must. So by clicking accept, it moves it up to an hour. It moves. It, it, oh, it, right. it goes to what is put into here. I put an hour now because we moved to five, because I know you <laughs> need the reminder because you're normally filming Let's Plays. <sighs> but you made it. Except I am struggling invite. this week. So you wouldn't have made it if Muriel hadn't Texted you. Well, I, uh, we yeah. were going to get some food because you, you said you would like to have food because since we moved the podcast earlier, we don't have food it, anymore. What notice of food? Yeah, what? It's so still dinner time. There was no food because uh, the delivery service screwed up. So Muriel was, reached out to Gavin to ask him, "Do you want something anyway? We can run." She was like, you want, real any, fast. "You want anything before the show?" And I was like, "What show?" Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if if the food had gotten here on time, you would not have been here on time. No, I wasn't even at the office. I, I actually um I finished shooting my MDB for the day. Then I went home and I was like, I'm going to finish this slow-mo edit that I've been working all week. Keep getting interrupted to work on different stuff. And then I left <laughs> and came here. <laughs> so I still haven't finished it. I finally watched the uh, the Hitman video where you realized that the podcast had been going for 20 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> it was just, it was also so nonchalant the way you're just like, got a podcast. <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, yep. You what you didn't see in that it. video was me sprinting. I think I was on this set within... 40 seconds. Yeah. That. yeah. Also, your lip looks so much better, I just realized. Yes, it's not uh, in we my mouth a, anymore. We had an incident where Gavin was hurt on the set of Immersion. Let me see. Look at me. All right, much better looking. It's a bit but when he did but... it, it was massive. And paintball hits. Gus, you and I have played paintball in the past. Mm -hmm. It was a paintball that did it to him. Hopefully, mm -hmm. it doesn't spoil anything. Um, uh, paintball injuries, when you get them, they're like, ow. They don't look that bad that moment. But they get way worse over the course of the next few days. Oh, there you go. <laughs> His looked really bad immediately, and I was like, "That's gonna get it was really hard a lot to eat worse when it was like that." I, <laughs> did you bite your lip a bunch? Uh, I just I didn't want to risk it, so I just pulled my lip down and I just poured soup in. That's so great! <laughs> Such a Gavin thing this to do. Is totally a Gavin solution to oh, it. Just get a funnel and just put it in and glug glug glug. Have you ever had your gums numb for like any dental work mm -hmm. before? Does it feel like that kind of like with your mouth? I guess it's not numb. It just hurts actually no, like a it, lot more. It was the opposite of numb. In fact. <laughs> it really hurt. And then uh, it was immediate. The swelling was... It was immediate. So we're not going to say anything about this video, but it hit me in the face. Yeah. You were wearing... Clearly. Did you say you were wearing a mask for the yeah. paintballs? We would never do anything with paintballs. Oh, God. We wouldn't fire paintball people yeah. if they didn't have face Paint protection. But the fact that it still hit his lip, even though it was wearing a mask, is impressive. It went through part of the mask. But all of a sudden, I was We might have like, turned up the paintballs a little higher. Yeah, okay. so I was running about, and all of a sudden, I was like, ow. And then you have that moment where it's like, all right, I'm in an incredible amount of pain. How injured am I? Right. So I'm trying to like see if all my teeth are there. What's and worse, immediate pain or immediate numbness where you can start to feel, feel the pain coming in? To me, the numbness, if you feel like completely numb. Oh, yeah. And then it's like, I don't know how bad this is. To, to me, it was instant pain. It was like I got punched. Yeah. And then I had a mouthful of paintball and paint. So it tastes like, like shit. Yeah, the paint was awful. So I'm spitting out all this stuff, and I've got shards of stuff. So I'm like, is this the paintball shell, or is this one of my teeth that's Ooh, exploded? Right. So I'm just gauzing out all this stuff, and it was mainly paint and paintball shell. But from our perspective, Gavin was doing his thing. His head goes back. He lets out <laughs> kind like of like JFK. a yelp. 
and then he lowers his head and doesn't say anything for like 30 seconds. Even though we're all asking him, are you okay? Are you okay? And it's a combination of being in pain, assessing whether or not he's lost any teeth, yeah. and probably, <laughs> honestly, just you were probably pretty mad that that oh, happened. Oh, I wasn't mad. I was just shocked. Yeah. And and the moment it hit my face, sort of the rest of the world was gone to me. I was like, all right, what the... Mm-hmm. Dealing with Did this Did it, now. like, wind you at all? No. And then I was just like, hit me in the face. And then we stopped. <laughs> Immersion is one of those shows where, like, that's the one people get injured on for some reason. It is. That's the one where uh, yeah, Lindsay, I, Lindsay got her, hurt herself. her uh, lip cut open, yeah, her chin I, cut open. I saw open. comments, you know, when you posted that, people were saying, like, oh, you know, that's the first time anyone's ever been hurt on an immersion, on a wrist shoot. I was like, <laughs> you not people not. do not remember not even close. some of the shit that has gone on. Well, if you're a first member, you could see extra bonus episodes, like me and Lindsay doing the Space Invaders immersion in Australia, and she like hits her head badly on a metal bar and gets gashed open yeah michael hurt himself too on on yesterday's one. Oh, did he yeah With in a different way oh. in a spoiler i remember way. i think oh it was... yeah I, he, he showed me I'm, I, gonna, I, I'm gonna see so there's a question on twitter as to whether or not calendar alerts are local thank you becca's saying that they're local but i think that the way i send them they're they convey with the invite so i have an rt podcast thing my alert is 10 minutes before oh is becca on my side Becca is on your side. Becca is on your side, but she's also not on the air, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> so she doesn't. Well, why do so I bother if... setting all these alerts? I don't know because you're, you're notifying you're yourself. Too. Aren't you setting I just, them for I, you? I set them from the calendar, like because the calendar it doesn't originate from my calendar. There's a podcast calendar, right? But so you're setting it from. for the podcast calendar. But I, I thought that that conveyed that data conveyed. I don't nah. think it does. Well, bullshit! What the fuck? That's stupid. I was trying to. Trying to like support you quietly, but I also don't remember ever getting an alert an hour before a podcast. Why didn't you speak up? Because I like him shitting on you, and yeah. I like oh. you being so, uh, you speaking of getting victim. shit on. Okay, <laughs> I got shit on a Monday because the previous Monday I showed off my AirPods, <laughs> and then I lost them on our trip to Austria. Immediately, the Special Olympics, and they're laughing at me. I can I can hear them. So guess what I did on Tuesday. Did you go buy new AirPods? No, I went to the airport and they found my fucking AirPods. <laughs> What's that, control room? Where's your fucking applause now? Bernie, it doesn't you change the fact you still lost the Godless first place. fucks in there laughing at my. How did you do that? Like, did you go to like the, the airline counter and be like, hey, uh, I lost I left something in your lounge? I'm a big idiot. G- Gab was with me. I actually went to the 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 downstairs. Uh, I don't know if I should reveal the inner politics of American Airlines at Austrum Bergstrom Airport, but I went downstairs by the carousels where the luggage is, because that was the only thing that was open when we landed at 1130. The the club where I lost them closed at 730. Mm. And there was this lady who was nice, <laughs> but very, very slow. You ever see Zootopia with the sloth? No. <laughs> okay. Well, did, Barb, have you seen it? Yeah. She was like the female version of that. And uh, it was uh, infuriating. I had to step out. <laughs> Gavin, I couldn't be around I it. just felt Gavin like a dark cloud. You know, like when a storm cloud's rolling in, it's just like you can tell the shadow as mm-hmm. it goes over everything. I could feel that happening with Gavin behind me, and then he just left the room. I, yeah, I felt she it. was like, they were. you said they weren't beats. I was like, no, they're not beats. Um, but they okay, could so, be because someone could mistake them for beats. Okay, so we just know this some, is beats. Uh, we've had some beats, but they're not beats. And at one point, I came back in and you were like, hey, give me your, your AirPods because I've got some. And uh, we'll, I'll show her. So you held them up and showed them to her. And she was just like, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. And didn't look at them once. Not even she was once. like, I'm not even interested in knowing what they look like. And I was like, oh, i got to leave again. <laughs> so I was still trying to work this angle through Twitter support with American Airlines. And they had told me about three times over the course of three days. Oh, yeah, we'll contact them and we'll let you know. And like, you haven't contacted me. And they're like, oh, they haven't gotten back to us. Then all of a sudden, Twitter DM hits. It's American Airlines. They go, Admiral's Club has your AirPods. Wait, the Twitter account DM'd you? Yeah, because I've been talking to them. That's the yeah, only way. Twitter support. That was the only That's, way I, yeah. I could do Impressive. it when I was in Austria. That's the only way I could think. Because like, there's no number into the Admiral's Club. Barb missed the initial story on the podcast because uh, she was Jessica Negri on Monday. I don't know mm-hmm. if you remember or not, guys. I downgraded oh, yeah, yeah. since then. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's, dude, she was great. She's a podcast. She, she was on Always Open too, and my God, that woman the, her is po- incredible. She had a good post show. Her post show was phenomenal. Yeah. But anyway, so Twitter DM says, hey, the Admiral's Club has your thing. Lovely lady who I've never met at the Admiral's Club. Her name is Brittany. She came out from behind security after her shift was over. I set a, set a time to meet her. She gave me my AirPods, and I walked away. But before I did, I asked her, I said, oh, I, I went downstairs to the luggage carousel lost and found, uh, the general lost and found for American Airlines. And uh, they weren't there. She goes, 
I would never give the people downstairs anything. That's oh, all she said. There was so much like behind that statement. I don't know what it was, but it was like clearly there's a line between the lost and found people in the Admirals Club and the lost and found people down at the Do you think she cell. knows about that really slow woman? Maybe. She just doesn't trust her. And, no, because I can tell you that when she said it, I went, yeah, I get it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, so, I know what you mean. Someone on Twitter, uh, I think it was Rose42 Days, is, wants to know how you can prove they're actually yours and not just another pair of mm. AirPods. Oh, I'll tell you how I know. Because to show off AirPods again, oh, oh, let me clear my calendar invite. When you turn them on. Was it an hour before? When I, when I actually was wondering this, but when I opened them up, it yeah. says Bernie's AirPods on them. Oh, they're right there. So, yeah, it, no, it labels them as Bernie's AirPods. Okay, there you and go. And like no AirPods that have that turned on would be able to do that? Yeah, I mean, if you want to open yours, my, 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 mine wouldn't be connected. Yeah, it wouldn't sync, I guess. Yeah. What if it even if it was that close? I don't have mine on me. I don't know the way technology works. No, these things are dope, though. That I mean, I, 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 were you on the podcast when I showed them off? Yes. And then immediately lost them? Yeah. Yeah, uh, like so got them back. kind of bleeding. No thanks to the horrible people in the control room who oh, just you, didn't you, have you my back. You shouldn't need their help. You're the one who lost it. It's Listen, I need thing. moral support <laughs> on a regular basis. And all <laughs> I got so, was... Are, are you saying it wasn't funny when you lost them? It was hilarious. It was hilarious. It was, it was hilarious. So was I feel like uh, we, we kind of forgot something at the top. We should uh, have gone over our goals for first week. Well, we're having this podcast because of first week. Yes. And actually, this this broadcast is live to the public. Yeah. Normally, yeah. only available for first members. Normally, yeah. If you, if you like this and you uh, want to watch future broadcasts of the podcast live, you can sign up to be a first member at Teeth.com. You get a 30 day free trial. And uh, this week we have goals for people who sign up for first. Uh, where are we at? So we're over 3,000. So we've unlocked the Year of the Rooster shirt, the John Reisinger gets replaced by a puppet on On the Spot uh, goal, Barbara makes a vlog goal. <laughs> and if we hit 5,000, Achievement Hunter will redub an episode of Ruby. And if we hit 10,000, the drunken Red vs. Blue video gets released. How long do we have? Uh, this, just Until this week. Monday. Uh, until what? Until Monday. Until Monday. There you go. Yeah, it's a full week. People, some people think it's only until Friday, but it's whole super week. excited about the Ruby redub. Mm -hmm. Even more excited about the drunk red versus blue. Right? Not coming out. <laughs> um, I, I, I have I have a feeling we might not hit our goal for that, and I, not to run counter to the efforts of the company. I'm so fucking grateful. Well, here's I'm not the thing. Hit that goal. I assume, Control room knows. They know. I assume we only need, we're at almost 4,000, I believe. So we only need about 6,000 signups. And I'm sure there's probably close to 6,000, if not more, people watching on YouTube right now. They can't do that. I don't have any, I don't have close any faith in you. So I'm saying if all of you sign up for free trials right now. Well, they might already have them. Get a friend to sign up for a free trial right there now. There you go. Or gift a sponsorship or a first membership to Do we people. do referrals? Referral uh, discount. We don't. But you could gift a, a first membership to You people. know what does referrals? I'm just saying. You'll hit it. Tesla does that. And they constantly, it's one of the lamer things that Tesla does is they, it's, a pyramid scheme. it's in the app, it reminds you, and then they also periodically send you emails as well. Like with such a high-end car, you don't want to be bombarded with like ads to try and sell other people cars. I would agree with that, Gavin. And they're even like, the reward program is if you get five people to sign up, they give you like $10,000 off your next Tesla. It's, it's just, it's an extraordinary amount of money. To, that you're generating for the company, which is just, it, it's not, I just don't associate it with that kind of thing, you know? I mean, I guess you could do it with Model 3s, it's more likely, because more people are going to buy them. How but, does it work if but you buy people are going to, like, order a car and not get it for, like, three years. Right. It's a very word-of-mouth brand, though. I mean, they don't advertise. Nope. How much do you get if you just, like, buy me a Tesla? <laughs> no, I don't get anything. I lose a Tesla in the process. That's what I lose. What, but, like, what if you just, like, like bought me one? Like Barbara, you convinced me. <laughs> you're, you're an incredible <laughs> negotiator. <laughs> it, was, so, it was the extra food negotiator can, here at the table. This is my lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> can I tell you something incredibly stupid I did? Yeah. It, oh, please. I'm, I'm only telling this story because it got resolved in a way that's okay for me. Uh, I don't know if you remember, a couple months back, I retweeted this thing, this contest that United Airlines was having where you could fly. Uh, on their first Polaris flight from like Chicago to San Francisco. I do remember you talking about this. And uh, what you wanted to win it? I was like, oh, it, you know, I want to win it. There's no way I don't have enough miles. I'll make a high bid just so that I'm winning it for now. I'll take a screenshot and I tweeted that. I was like, there's no way I'm actually going to win that. I want it. <gasps> oh, are you serious? You did? Yeah. Congrats. No. Wait, how much? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you got to pay for it? I spent 300,000 miles on it. Oh! Oh, you scared me for a second. I, was, I thought you were going to say no, dollars. No, no. I was going to say, what did you do? 300,000 miles. But the problem was, but I found out that? about I found out I won when I was in New Zealand, and the flight was like the day after I came back from Australia. So I would have to fly to Austin, then immediately fly to Chicago to fly to San Francisco to fly to Austin, and I had to film Heroes and Halfwits that day. And I was like, I, I just can't do it. 
So I replied to them. I was like, listen, I know I won. I know I can't get those miles back. Uh, uh, what, I, I, I get my I, miles back? I was like, I just want to let you know that I can't make it. That way, if you want to give the seat to someone else or if there's, you know, something else you can do, like, go, go for it. Uh, and they're like, okay, you know, just so you know, we can't refund anything. I was like, it's totally fine. Ugh. Totally fine. It's my fuck up. Then like two weeks later, they emailed me and they're like, hey, we feel really bad for you. Uh, we're going to give you your miles back. Oh, oh my good. God. They yeah. should. They just yeah. came out of nowhere. They came out of nowhere. Like the conversation that, was dead. That's a lot of miles. That's a Dude, lot that's of miles. that's an incredible You can go of miles. far in first class for those miles. What's, a, what's like the monetary equivalent of that? There oh really is, is no there monetary. Yeah, I mean, with 300,000 miles, you could fly around the world. Yes. An international flight. A domestic flight I typically associate as being 25,000 miles round, round trip, trip, but that's if you plan really well. Yeah. Uh, and I'd say an international flight is either 50 or 75,000 miles. So he used up like five or six international flights to bid wow. on this thing. Yeah, that was dumb, but it you got dumb. it back. I so forgot. Okay. I totally forgot. I was like, there's no way that someone's going to bid way more than that. I and can't believe you won. So wait, what was the <laughs> flight that you missed? What was so good about it? Uh, it was like the first time they were flying with a brand. It was like the first time uh, they just received this plane from Boeing. They had outfitted it with their brand new, like super top of the line, first class seating. And it would have been the first time a customer sat in that seat, in that first class seat to fly. Oh my God, I can't believe you were okay with parting with that many miles. I was, I was, <laughs> no, that's a lot. I was not happy. That's, that's about to a generate, tenth of what I've earned lifetime. To generate up. that many miles hey. would take a long time. Yellow. <laughs> But to fly like to fly all the way around the Earth is only twenty five thousand. Yeah, you miles. only live once, but you have to fly like eighty <laughs> times. Yeah, to but get it's that, an though. experience, and it'd, like it'd be like doing twelve entire laps of the planet. You know what? I'm, so Barbara odd. and her lawyer convinced me I'm on her side now. What? She's right. Yeah, she's absolutely right. You only live once. Use those fucking miles. Yeah, I, I, cool. I, I, fucking experience. And I would have done it. It was just I couldn't have. Uh, I would have been tired coming back from Australia, and we had already planned to film this Heroes in Halfwood thing, and we had had a lot of scheduling trouble mm. at the time. It's like we couldn't have possibly moved it. So I would have fucked over a production That's by going nice on That's nice of you because thing. I know other people who might not have done the same. Who, what, what? <laughs> I did what? You remember, Patrick, it's when we were trying to coordinate when I was in Australia and I was like, can we just set a fucking date? Yeah. And it was that Monday. Yeah. And we finally set a date and I was like, I was only being an asshole. Like, we just need to set a goddamn date and film. Yeah. Then it would have been like, oh, and then, I'd, by the way, I can't make it. Well, what if Frank was busy? <laughs> what if Frank was busy? What are you talking about? I feel like there are other people here. I I don't want to speak 100% in confidence, but I feel like if there was an opportunity like this for one of you guys, you would delay a production to, to experience it. I would, however, use that for my vlog, so I'd make it part of a production. <laughs> Gus would just be sitting in his fucking rich ass in a seat drinking martinis. <laughs> <or> <laughs> <doing> <laughs> Pinky up in the air. People don't delay productions feet. for me. They just do them anyway, so it's fine. <laughs> We've already established that. Okay. Yeah, we were not delaying today. Well, let me, let me, are you, are you, are you, is that more directed at me and Gav, Barbara, or specifically at just Gavin? Uh, I plead the fifth. So Gavin and I, we were supposed <laughs> to be at the Special Olympics for 10 days. That was initially what we were supposed to do. It was going to go right up until Laser Team, until Friday. We were going to come home tomorrow. Uh, but we ended up coming home Sunday because we had the immersion for Gavin to get, you know, his lips knocked off. Yeah. And then uh, two days of MDB as well. So yeah. came back. we had to come back for that. That's why I haven't been, like, been able to do my videos because I was in Austria. And then I had immersion, immersion, MDB, MDB. Yep. <laughs> and now this. It's that's been what a busy I, week. That's what I call it when Aaron comes home after a vacation. Knock his lips I, off? No, I get my lips knocked off. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Talk about labia. Oh, somebody pointed out a great use for AirPods. <laughs> Not that this is a reason to buy them. Three years ago? I can't remember when we did it. We did a, we did a series of binaural podcasts on mm. the RT Labs channel. Mm. I did them where it's, it preserves the uh, stereoscopic... Uh, spatial audio. Spatial audio, the properties of the ears. And I did a relationship podcast with me and Ashley and Meg and Gavin. And they said if you have those the AirPods in, it's like it works really well. And I tried it out. It's like it's it, really it, well, it works like any other headphone. What the fuck like... fucking advantage do they have over any other headphone? <laughs> Look, I'm excited. All I'm think... saying is I hadn't heard it in a long time and I only listened to it on AirPods. But you're so saying it would be a selling point for an AirPod. It's identical. It's literally it's headphones. Any pair of headphones. He's just really trying to push those AirPods. And They're available in the Apple, Apple store. How much Apple stock do you own, motherfucker? Dude, <laughs> these things are stupid expensive too. These, these are these are dumb. Like they, I, they're a How great product. They? How much do you think these are, Barbara? They're for fucking headphones. How much are they? Three hundred dollars. Okay, I shouldn't. I yes, because there are some <laughs> headphones that cost three hundred dollars. Yeah, I would head never buy a pair like that unless maybe for like a studio oh. headphones. Yeah. Um. No, these are one hundred and fifty for earbuds, and that just seems too expensive to me. Like one hundred fifty nine, right? Yeah, but it is. Honestly, they are expensive. 
It, like when I compare it to other headphones and prices of other headphones yeah. I've seen, even earbuds. That's well, actually not as bad. Most as Bluetooth I ones are about ninety nine bucks. Yeah. I was yeah. excited to try Bluetooth because the dumb, stupid, dumb plug was gone. This dumbass yeah. dongle. So obviously let's reward them by giving them one hundred and sixty bucks. Exactly but right. I will say I've lost maybe ten pairs of headphones to my cats. The original white ones. Yeah. The cat will just go. Oh, they're broken. And they can't. If I leave them the anywhere, cats are the worst. What? They can't do it with these. No. No, it's great. They could swallow one whole, but <laughs> they could chew the case <laughs> a little bit. Like that nah, is nah, their nah, own nah. fault. Imagine like. <laughs> Waving your phone across the cat, and it's like, Gavin's <laughs> earpod. Oh, it's in the cat. All of a sudden, the music just starts playing in the cat's belly. Meow, <laughs> <laughs> meow. Yeah, I guess that would be a lot. That would be a lot worse, though, if the cat just bit your earphone. Yeah. Then, and then because the, the the plain stupid white ones, they, they're just bundled in with whatever product. Exactly. Do you see that they came out with a, a red iPhone? Yes. You see Comes that? Comes out tomorrow. They Mike, could tomorrow. care less about that. Fucking red. Who wants red? I know. I think it's in support of... It's a Project Red. AIDS and mm-hmm. yeah, but that, that, that char- supporting AIDS. No, that's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> that charity is not like we say support of breast. Cancer. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. <laughs> Isn't that charity just gash though? I've heard like terrible. Things. I've heard terrible. All things it does about. is just Project Red. It just raises awareness by just saying it's for AIDS. It doesn't right. do anything to it. It raises AIDS. awareness kind of like for the AIDS. Breast cancer research thing where it's to promote the awareness of Coleman, breast cancer. The Komen Foundation. I think Project Red is has even less money that they send through for research. Like you know they got called wow. on the fact that they contributed so little money. To real world solutions or remedies, uh, you know, for AIDS, that they said, "Well, that's not what we do. We're we're here to just raise awareness of AIDS. We're not here to like." I would actually... I would like a red iPhone, but I don't, I don't want to give to that charity. I want to for, see for a long time a before we did you know extra life before we used to do extra life every year and had charitable initiatives. Uh, it's one of the reasons I was very reluctant for Rooster Teeth to get involved doing charity stuff is because I didn't want to create another step between people and the organization that needs the money. Okay, we it might... just feels weird to me to put yourself in that place, be like, give us money, and then we'll give it to someone else, or we'll help somehow. Are yeah. we mixing this up? Are we mixing up something, two things? I don't know. Because I've heard that about Red, but then I looked up Bono, and maybe I'm mixing up two stories in my head, but Bono's one foundation under fire for giving little over 1% of the funds to charity. Well, he's he's in he did Red, too, didn't he? Yeah, I believe he did, didn't he? Because so there was a big right? argument between the thing that Bono does is he him and Steve Jobs charities. about having product Red on the product, on the actual... One of the first people behind it, apparently, is what Control Room just said. It was Patrick, Patrick, specifically. I can never, sometimes I can't decipher who said what. I'm sorry, I should know your voices by now. Patrick, I love you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, there you go. I All also, right. like, when, whenever charities are to raise awareness about them, maybe I'm just very dumb on this subject, but, like, could you go up to someone and be like, hey, do you know what AIDS are? And they say, no. What AIDS are? <laughs> what they are. What it is. How many AIDS do you have? But it's like... I anything? feel like nobody's forgetting about AIDS. Yeah, that's the thing. Right. No one's it's saying not, no. It's not like Ebola. Like, people forgot for a while, and then it came back. And it's like, oh, remember Ebola? Or breast AIDS cancer. Is like you know they AIDS. have a vaccine for Ebola now that's working pretty well in trials. Oh, really? Yeah, that's pretty cool. I got really obsessed with Ebola. And at the time, I when it was the last mm-hmm. outbreak in Africa, I subscribed to the R Ebola subreddit. <laughs> and I keep forgetting to unsubscribe, so I see, like, these random things about, like, you know, um, new Assassin's Creed, whatever. Four new cases in New Guinea. I'm like, what's this? Oh, it's Ebola. You know, and it's 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 really it took a long time for it to peter out that last outbreak. But uh one of the most recent headlines is this uh vaccine that's apparently going through very successful trials. So Ebola's not, nothing to worry about <laughs> anymore. We're good. Oh, and um on an unrelated note, I forgot we should also mention that if you're watching live for the first time, you can tweet us at hashtag RT Podcast. Unless you have Ebola, then we you keep can't an eye do on that. the Twitter feed and we'll so get, pick stuff out. That like whole, we talked about uh, that, Ebola. that so, whole outbreak came at a really bad time because I was trying to make a app about <clears throat> bowling and it was going to be called Ebola. <laughs> Why are you guys laughing at that? Just, that might be the go. biggest laugh you've ever had, and nobody on the podcast laughed. And that was yeah, that was terrible. No one on the podcast ever laughs. We laugh when they're no, good. So, there was one time where I went. <laughs> <laughs> there was yeah, one. Like, there was one that you did that got me too, and I was pretty excited about it because I, I yeah. get, there was a barber joke that I really liked. So if you're not going to buy Barbara a Tesla, who at the <laughs> company would you be most likely to buy a Tesla? For? Ashley. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I pick somebody, like uh, if you had to buy a really expensive Tesla for <laughs> someone at the company, <laughs> who do you have to pick? For Matt. For That's a good answer. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense, right? Who would yeah. you buy a Tesla? And then for? Gus. Sorry, then Gus. Yeah, I'm at the over here. <laughs> You buy one for Gus? Yeah, damn right. Final trial results confirm Ebola vaccine loads a page slowly, provides high protection against disease. December 23rd, 2016. 
So you hear, heard it here first, also on the World Health Organization website. If Three months ago. That. Yeah. It's, uh, th but it's, uh, nobody's really talking about it because it, the Ebola outbreak, they did a great job of containing it. It's fucking scary shit, dude. What mm -hmm. was the name of that city in the U.S. The where all the water got messed up? Flint. Flint. It's not, didn't get messed up. It is currently messed up. messed up. But nobody's talking about that anymore, even though it's still like... No, no. Th then they say that they declared that the level of contaminants in the water is finally back below the federally mandated levels. But still, no one trust that water I with good know. reason yeah i i have trouble trusting the water that comes out of my tap now and i'm always a big proponent of tap water of versus tap? what's I wrong just, with your tap because the people in flint they drank the water not knowing you know what i mean they well wasn't it brown i don't think it was brown specifically sometimes yeah it would get like weird colors it would in flint it was like yellow and stuff yeah. i remember there was that one thing we saw where the tap was running was like yellow goo coming out or whatever yeah. it was. oh yeah so even if they filtered it through like a Brita filter, would it still give him illness? For a while, there was no commercial filter you could buy that would fix it. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty reliant on those because Austin tap water sucks, and I don't care what you say; it's terrible. Oh yeah, it's brown. There's, there's, oh yeah, it's brown. All tap water tastes the exact same to me. No, no way. Austin tap water definitely has a smell sometimes. Austin tap water, like what was it like in Canada? Could you just drink tap water? Yeah, it's like that in Austin too. So it's shitty there too. No, it's it's. It's water. Like if your Canadian tap water was like Austin tap water, your tap water was shit. God damn it, you're fucking I, in trouble today. I guess I prefer Canadian tap water if I had to pick one or the other. Did it's all icebergs. See, did you see that? Clearly it's Canadian nice is making a comeback. Remember Clearly Canadian? Oh yeah, yeah. Flavored waters. Yeah, they're. I guess they're coming back to market after having. You. I guess y'all were. We need more cherry flavored stuff. Canadian. Like cherry flavored, I feel it has dropped off a little bit. Cherry flavored needs to make a research. We need. Oh, oh careful there. We need ketchup chips. <laughs> this, we need ketchup chips taste. in the U.S. Ketchup chips and all dress chips. We need no, those here. Get the fuck off. They get are the off. best flavor of chips. Ellie was telling me about something the other day too that they have in the U.K. Some kind of Korean barbecue. Crisp? Oh yeah, yeah. What is it? She's just telling me about it. Is it the chicken? It's like a tandoori something. Korean and I'm tandoori just making, are I'm just making very shit. different. Is it the Taiwan chicken, chicken teriyaki chips? Maybe that's it. <laughs> she told me some new <laughs> slang today. <laughs> What'd she teach you? I'm learning some of my new English slang from someone in Texas, but she's English too, so she's English. Like, she taught she taught me allow it. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> and you just say it for whatever reason. Allow, allow it. <laughs> allow it. Yeah. Like not all allow it, just allow it. Does it I mean the same thing as all allow it? You'll have to like check with her on the specifics. I'm, well, not, I'm, I'm not glad really you brought it up. British slang <laughs> that Gavin doesn't understand. Well, I mean, it's all regional, isn't it? You don't know every American slang. Isn't it? I know <laughs> literally every American slang. Test me. Boston. What up, dog? Wicked. There you go. All right. That's Nebraska. Uh, corn. corn. Yeah. <laughs> husk. <laughs> Man, that's so husk. You are a husk right now. Yeah, we met the nicest guy in uh, Austria. He was. Uh, he used to be a athlete for the Special Olympics, and now he's a global ambassador. And he's from Nebraska. Just like the nicest dude. Yeah, and it, like here's his backstory and everything. We're gonna. I'm putting out the vlog. Tomorrow it should come out Friday. Uh, for, Are you struggling or, to get it done because you're so busy? Yeah, a little bit. It's difficult, isn't it? Trying to play catch up, especially yeah. when you take a trip. Well, on the trip out, I edited the previous vlog for South by Southwest. I was editing that on the plane. You were editing it on the plane, out. and then you shot something on the plane, and then slopped it right in. I did. Slopped I needed it. like a capper <laughs> on that thing. I, I found an that. article here. It's 40 American slang phrases for that Brits need to know. Ah, let's hear them. Go ahead. Okay. I'm just gonna go. You wanna give me the definition? I'll try to tell you what the slang term is. Barb, you want in on this? You're Canadian. Sure. It's almost American. Like, what do you mean? What, Intransitive what's verb for leaving abruptly. Ghost. Peace out. For leaving abruptly? Yeah. What did you say? He said oh, peace out. Bolt. Oh. Uh, jet. Bail. Bail, yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um, go down here. How about. Uh... All right, why don't you give us the word and we'll, we'll define it? Okay. Well, um, how about. This Pass really the buck. Means don't take responsibility for something. You know this, Gavin? You know this, yeah. right? Yeah. I'm, we should have Gavin try to guess the... Pass the, the buck. You never heard pass the buck? Yeah. Like, no. You pass so the buck. You don't, you don't take responsibility for it. You try to put it on somebody else. Is that what it means? Yeah. Oh. You ever hear the phrase, the buck stops here? Yes. Yep. I've never known what it means. It I'm just means that... You like, take responsibility. You take responsibility. Oh, okay. Like, you can, people are passing the buck. The buck stops here. Bang. How about, uh, Gavin, how about uh, bought the farm? I don't know that one. You spent your money on something way too expensive. Wow, they don't... Wow, that's really amazing. Yeah, they this don't is really weird. They all don't know these. Bought the farm means you died. He bought the farm. <laughs> I was close. What's that got to do with dying? I don't know. 
Uh, Bob's what your uncle. <laughs> That's what's got to do with it. <laughs> uh, the phrase originates from World War II era military accidents involving unreliable aircraft crashing into Euro rural European countryside properties, resulting in damages for which the U.S. government was responsible to pay. Therefore, buying the farm, so to that's speak. That's amazing. Oh, is that wow. really what that, that is? That's what it says here in the same page. So they made a joke out of people crashing into a field, and that means they're they crashing into the European farm. fields. Wow. All right, next. Uh, how about um, shoot the breeze? Oh, that's just like small talk, right? Did you know that one, Gav? I didn't know that one. Yep. Really? This is fascinating to me. Isn't it like small talk? You, no, you nailed it. Right. Okay. Yeah, shoot the breeze is just sitting around just talking. Okay. Just sitting around shoot the breeze. Shoot the breeze. Uh, I have a weird variation of that. I shoot the shit. Where I talk about yeah. whenever I invite someone out, I said, let's go out and have a drink and talk about which way the wind blows. And I don't know if I picked that up from somewhere <laughs> or if I just say that to people. That's like a taking that phrase and just. Yeah. It's, it's like a foreigner heard that phrase and is trying to <laughs> it's recreate. Just like, no agenda. Let's just, chat a gale. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to see. I'm just trying to find. Let's fire the wind. Here. <laughs> here comes Hurricane Gabby. Uh, how about. You'll get it later. Plead the yeah. fifth. Uh, oh, oh yeah. Barbara said I, that. I said that. Like, this is literally 10 minutes ago. A while ago. What what is it though? What what does that mean? Everybody knows what it means in context, but what is it? What does plead the fifth, fifth mean? amendment? Which is what? Do you know? Just don't you don't have to say anything. You don't have to incriminate yourself. Yeah, yeah basically. Yeah. All right. Uh, last one. Last one. Uh, spill the beans. Yeah. Like, That's the English one, isn't it? Give us the truth, or or tell us the truth. Let the cat out the bag. I that's what that's you know what I learned no, recently? No, I mean, it, it, it talks about how British English speakers pick up on the use of the word spill as a metaphor for divulging, but that spill the beans is an American oh, okay. offshoot. I learned, uh, is it spill the tea that we talked about on Always Open a couple weeks ago? Spill the, I think it's spill the tea. It means like, give us the truth. The tea is the truth. Uh -huh. So it's mm. like spill the truth. She wants the tea. Got it. But it's like, oh, that tea's so hot. <laughs> spill it. Thank you. I got, I got you, Gus. We now make this show for the control room. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> if they're laughing, someone else out there is laughing. That's interesting. You guys didn't know bought the farm. That's interesting. I mean, I didn't know the origin of it, but I definitely. I've also never question. purchased a farm. Well, good for you. Would you buy Gavin a farm? No. Why am I if buying you had people to stuff buy... today? Because oh, Barbara's talking about buying a Tesla. I know, but I would. I, I know. Referring... That's why I'm asking. Why okay. am I buying stuff from you? <laughs> Who in the company would you not buy a Tesla for? Well, everybody. My everybody. <laughs> Who would you? Who would be on the bottom of your list? Control room, probably. <laughs> These guys, because they just get to work faster to make fun of me. Patrick sent like. me some uh, some pictures of some crisps. Was it maybe Japanese teriyaki chicken? Maybe it was. Or May I text Australian, Ellie and find out? Australian barbecue kangaroo. Was it Australian barbecue kangaroo? That sounds horrible. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> yeah, walkers are. Uh, the teriyaki chicken's what dude, I, I got. I, you know what? I don't, I don't like on the podcast when you admit that you don't know something, and people who just know it because they lived a different life than you and learned this have fact, Google. and they freak out about the fact that you know something. The the concept that I thought that at some point in my life I came up with the misconception that ostriches are from Australia bothers a significant portion of our audience to where they contact me about it. I'm like. At what point, what was, they go, Good, you really just speaking poorly of the American education system. I'm like, what is the class where they teach you where animals originated from? <laughs> I mean, it's, it, what? Animal what, etymology. Yeah. In second grade. Geography. Like, where are horses from? We all know horses. Where the fuck are they from? America. It's a horse that's around, a horse around everywhere. Where do cats come from? America. Horses originated like in, oh God, I want to say like Mongolia. Mo I, I, was, I would have guessed Mongolia too, mm -hmm. but that's it. It's a great line in Arrival. Um... The translation. Have you seen Arrival? Yeah, when, of course. When she's up against another translator for the job at the beginning, mm -hmm. and she tells the colonel, "Ask him what the the phrase this phrase means in Mongolian." Oh, right. And he said he asked him, and he said he it meant uh, to go to war. And she said, "No, it means the quest for more cows or something like that." I don't know something right, about the that. Quest for more horse or the quest yeah, for more yeah something like more that. More cows or more horses or something like that. And I just thought that was I don't know why that moment was so understated, but I really no, I love was, it. It's she like, was making it up there, wasn't she? Yeah, she did. She made it up, but it was great. I didn't want to ruin that part of the movie. So, Gavin, thanks for like spoiling. There's something about the subtlety of, of <laughs> so language and communication. One joke. Even like going back to like our slang language, you know, stuff like that. There's so many like nuanced meanings that yeah. can be easily lost. Slang language. Slang language. Um, All right. What are the chips that you like, Ellie? Yeah, while you look that up, I want to remind everyone this episode of the Rooster Teeth podcast is brought to you by Movement Watches. Except for my Movement Watch. Uh, absolutely love the watch they sent me. It's sleek, stylish, and I get tons of compliments whenever I wear it. Uh, movement was started by two broke college kids that wanted to wear stylish watches but could not afford them, so they started their own watch company, as you do. The watches start at just $95 at a department store. You're looking at $400 to $500. Bucks. 
Movement figured out that by selling online, they were able to cut out the middleman and retail markup, providing the best possible price. Get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to mvmtwatches.com slash rooster. That's mvmtwatches.com slash rooster. Join the movement. You can get one just like me. It's this uh, black watch with blue hands and a light brown leather band. And there's not in this copy, but you can swap out the bands pretty easy, too. Um, did you get a response? Oh, I guess you just you just sent it out. We should talk about Thai sweet chili sensations. It's actually the <laughs> most recent tweet someone just sent me. Oh, was it those? Who is this? Uh, no. Chris okay. Wood sent in a, a photo of Walker's they are the bomb. Thai sweet chili. Why? They're, the app, they're like the, the nicest. Y'all crisp. are really trying to find out what kind of chips these are. She's coming back right now. There's three little dots. I bet it's Thai sweet chili. You I know, bet it's chicken teriyaki. You know teriyaki. when you go into the handwriting mode on the iMessage, it comes up with You mean by accident? Because no one else ever does, does, does really? that. Yeah. You can she disable that. prawn cocktail. Oh, come on, Ellie. Yeah. Come on. It's gross, right? That's the worst. We're talking flavor. about it on like the podcast. Shrimps, but everyone hates you. Prawn cocktail, <laughs> the the pink the pink packet, Walker's crisps. Mm. I don't. I'm not a fan of all of those like flavored chips. Like it's supposed to taste like something else. If you want the other thing, just eat the other thing. Why why eat a piece of potato covered in chemicals to make you think it's something else? It's also why is like the what? the abundance of flavors is like this. That was perfect. I hope we got a soundbite of that. <laughs> we had potato chips for a long time, and then there was one other. What's the what's the original flavored? Potato chip. <laughs> it's just like salt. salt. Yeah, but that's that's potato chips. Potato. That's like, uh, like, like there were a couple. It was like barbecue and sour cream and onion. Sour cream and onion is what I always. What well, about salt and vinegar? Like, and then those that came later. Dude, salt and vinegar is like the American, 90s kids. The American crisp game is awful. It's just like classic, no. and then the the sour cream, and then sometimes salt and vinegar, and that's it. Barbecue, which by the way, I don't know what barbecue flavor means. Is it Ugh. supposed to go with a barbecue meal? Because it doesn't taste know. like any I barbecue. I fucking hate barbecue chips. You don't I have am. smoky bacon. You don't have prawn cocktail. You don't have. You just I said love cocktail. barbecue chips. Yeah, you don't no, have barbecue marmite. chips are awful. You don't have roast beef. You don't have roast chicken. She says the first thing she does when she lands at Heathrow is buy prawn cocktail crisps and a pint of British milk. British milk seems like it would be good. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> mm, chips and milk, <laughs> classic British. Dude, you haven't milk. lived. Are you serious? I was telling Gavin he was trying to make me ill on this trip. We talked about it in the podcast on Monday. I tried to give you him weren't food here. Keep bringing that up. For the me fact that you weren't here. I was replaced by someone way Gavin made more me beautiful and funny. Eat, he made me eat an entire platter of tuna sushi, like to see if he could make me sick, <laughs> get food poisoning. <laughs> we ate at the airport. We, we ordered sushi at the airport. I ate all that, and I did describe to him the one time I've ever gotten ill from eating, and that was when I was in college and I lived with Matt, and I came home with a whole package of Fig Newtons and a gallon of milk and I proceeded to eat an entire sleeve, one half the package of Fig Newtons in one go and about three quarters of a gallon of milk. Jeez. <laughs> All in one sitting. Matt just watched me doing it. It was before like we had camera phones on everything so he would have definitely filmed me doing it. And then they said I just laid on the floor for like three hours. Didn't like, you also get ill from eating all those tacos? Oh yeah, but that was that. I think that's an extenuating circumstance. I don't that consider that to poisoning. Be like, that was volume. Yeah, that was your. So stomach. was the Fig Newtons, I guess. But yeah. I wasn't going for a record. I was just bored and eating <laughs> nonstop. Yeah, you're I, the worst when you're bored. I'm the most nervous about shrimp at different places. Yeah, I was nervous about the mercury in the tuna. Yeah, I was a little worried about that. I feel like that's the easiest thing to get food poisoning off of. You know, I think I have oak allergies now in Austin. This might be a deal breaker for me in Austin if I have oak allergies because I don't know if you can hear it. But I'm a little sniffly. Were you Did sniffly you in great. Sydney? Uh, yeah, for the immersion. I don't remember you being sniffly. No, I was actually. Like I think I was legitimately sick. Like huh? I haven't been sick, sick in a really long time, and I think I legitimately had a cold. That was not allergies. This is allergies. And uh, right before Sydney, I got sick. Do you take Flonase? No, but I should. Take I didn't. Flonase. I, I didn't know this was coming. I didn't know. Mm. You like, should just take Flonase every day for your entire life. That's not medical advice. For someone that's, who would do that. That's what my... My doctor told me to do that. Take Flonase every day? Every mm -hmm. day. It's, 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 what, it's a preventative. Because you have to build well. up that you immunity. You I like fly it up your nose. My dad and my brother yeah. use Flonase, and they said it's like life-changing. They they also have really bad allergies, and yeah. once I started doing Flonase... I had to stop doing like it. completely better. It, I, I started waking up with bloody noses. I was like... And oh, I, they're, I mean, they're fine. And I stopped the... I don't know what you're doing wrong. Yeah, I stopped the uh, using the Flonase. How far are you away. shoving it up your nose? Oh, you oh like all the way. The Flonase, and then you were bloody noses? Yeah, I started getting bloody noses every Jeez, day. Jeez, I thought you said that got you to use Flonase. No, 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 no. The, the Flonase. I think the Flonase was causing it. Well, you should try it. Gus has problems. His every body, day? his body's like... My body's weird. shutting down. It's not long for the world. Well, I mean, he, he almost pooped himself in the post show. I, I did almost shut myself in the post show. If you're a first member, you can watch <laughs> that where I waddle out of here like a penguin. Is it because you just really had to shit your pants? 
It was that day we went to Shake Shack, remember? And I told yeah. you, like, I ate way too much. Like, finally, like, it was all settled and it was like, no. Well, you had a double cheeseburger, cheese fries, and a milkshake. Yeah, and I ate all of the fucking fries. <laughs> <You had laughs> I really? was like a fucking pig. Like, I ate all the burger, all the fries, and I was so sad. I was like, oh, now I've got to get a shake. Yeah. And you were like, no, you don't. I was like, yes, I do. <laughs> and I fucking got the shake. Yeah. It's a special and then you occasion. you sat here for 10 minutes between the end of the podcast and the post show. And was, the moment we hit record, you're like, I'm going to shit my pants. Yeah, I was fine. And then I, like, <laughs> there was just like a gurgle. <laughs> did uh, did all the talk of Jessica holding a fork between her butt cheeks oh help God. or make it oh, worse? Oh, I missed that. Like, that started as she, soon as he, I ran out. Came then I came right back after right the, the full left? demonstration. Yeah. You left during the post show. Yeah. But it was a big deal, Barb. It got posted today, so I can watch it now with my Rishi's first membership. No, listen, listen. In all seriousness, <laughs> Gus is doing one of his silly ads. This is 100% worth at the very least, a free trial for first. People are in the tweet feed talking about how they're going to get us to the drunk RVB release. You're not. So just give up. You're going to Did it. we ever? That, however, that episode of the post show, I can guarantee is worth getting a first membership for. Did you ever think you'd be using Jessica Negri's anus to sell first memberships? <laughs> I, yeah, somewhere in the back of my head, probably. <laughs> but, you know, dreams do come true for some people. The Watching her demonstrate that fork in her butt was... It's a it's a memory that I'm gonna cherish for a long time. <laughs> I like how you, I've never seen look. I've never seen Bernie clear a table faster. He's like, here, you can here, see look, me because like, <laughs> she was in the well, the camera was slightly in the way of the or the stuff on the table was of the camera, and I was like <laughs> I was <just> clearing everything <laughs> out of there. Her butt was right here, so I was just like, yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> she was awesome. She's still here, right? Yeah, I, I yeah. keep seeing her. She's, she's, running she's, around she's shooting stuff. something in the studio. She's gonna shoot like a do one of her photo shoots. Part yeah. of it. I hope it's okay to say that. I saw a teaser image for the episode of Fan Service she was in. Mm -hmm. uh, I th both, I think it, w it was definitely Miles and maybe Gray are both in that. Uh, Carrie too. And Carrie. They're all oh, in it. In the Virgin yeah. Killing sweater. Killer. The Virgin, Virgin Killer sweater. sweater. <laughs> yeah. Which I, I didn't understand at first, but now I do after seeing it. Why it's called that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that. That does not seem like a practical sweater. I don't think that. Th I don't think it keeps you warm. No. So can I do the subway Easy challenge? Access. Six foot long subs in one hour. I probably could do that. Why do you want to hurt yourself? I ate the whole platter of sushi in about seven minutes. I don't think. I mean, look at look <laughs> no at the size of the food, and then the size of a human. That's stomach. the thing, right? It's got to be its volume of person. So you're gonna space. fill the stomach and then stack on it. That's what the taco did. And my, my, when Gavin was touching my stomach, it was hard as a rock. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that when you opened your mouth wide enough, I could see I could see lettuce just like I was pushing in your the taco esophagus. Down. Push, push, push. And it's not, Gavin's got this weird thing of me and eating. Uh, we were talking about six years ago, I went on a trip with it. There's, there's a period six years ago that's very similar to the period we're in now, like all everything that's going on. And at that point in time, six years ago, Gavin and I left in the middle of all that stuff to go to Sweden on a Europe trip together. And on that trip, Gavin, we got a sandwich, like a six inch sandwich. And Gavin, and we're there with JD, who would have been like eight at the time. And Gavin's filming me, and he makes me eat the whole sandwich in one bite. Like, I had to <laughs> shove the entire six-inch sandwich into my face. I, I got it in two It's not two easy, bites. is it, Bernie? I, it's not, Barb. I got a lot of respect for <laughs> my lady friends. I like that we haven't changed. Nope. Nothing is different. I don't think I like anything as much as I like watching you guys bet each other to do things. Like, that video of you jumping into a car without using your hands is one of my favorite videos that you guys have filmed. People always think it's, like, a new thing that I'm doing. No, I'm it's... Like constantly betting people to do stuff. You've probably done this since I've you done were that since 15. I was able to earn money. Like, since I was working at Waitrose, I would often bet my entire day's wages for someone to, like, eat all the condiments. And I'd be like, oh, go to the cash point and get 40 quid out. Is that a, uh, is that a reputation that British people have, is betting? I don't know. I just like okay. seeing people eat stuff. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Hurt themselves. I still have a, a video that I took. It was on set for a million dollars, but where I was drinking out of a water bottle and I was holding the cap to the water bottle and Gavin said he'd give me $5 if I poured water into the cap and then poured it directly on my crotch. <laughs> yeah. And I was just like, that's the easiest $5 I've ever made. Yeah, I would do that. It's gone. The weird like thing is when, like when somebody accepts a bet from Gavin, away. when you accept a bet, you say, yeah. yeah, I'll do that. You immediately seem to go, oh, wait a minute. No, like he should have <laughs> amped it up. I did it. Remember when Michael ate, was going to eat the five pound gummy bear in an hour? And you were going to pay him something stupid to do that, like a thousand dollars? That was five hundred. Five hundred. Well, it's it's a impossible. stupid amount. Well, I mean, but when was he started, I watched you be like, uh oh, this is not a good <laughs> yeah. thing. I'm about to be out of five hundred. That well, happened that... with the barbecue sauce. Yeah, where he I, just chugged it. He was like, oh, you know, I'm yeah. done. 
No, I, I think like, he I took that it. sip and went, you're fucked. He did. And then <laughs> founded it. That was the one where we, we put out the animated adventure of that, and then like a year later put out the actual video, and they're very similar. Oh, but really? The animated adventure first? Well, because it was just a story on the podcast, and then I found the footage somewhere. Oh. Oh, <laughs> really? That's really backwards. So wait, a lot of people are asking us if we still try to assassinate each other with shoes. No. I got yes. you recently. We haven't done that a lot Sometimes. lately. We didn't, we didn't do it at all on this trip. But yeah, Barb did it to me just recently. Was that in the parking lot out here? I saw someone hit... I got someone, someone in day. the face. It was either Gavin or Bernie, but it was with this boot. Yeah, it was, so it was, was like right out here, right? Yeah. yeah, I was there. I saw that. And Kung it takes a lot, of, a lot of effort to take these shoes off. Yeah, those are serious boots. But Kung Shoes specifically, I think what triggers that is I see Gavin from afar. And then I like walk towards him slowly with my camera. Yeah. The worst thing I ever did to Gav, I feel like, <laughs> was Dan <laughs> Gucci was in town. Um, co-founder of the Slumo guys. And <laughs> they had gotten back from the sub shop. And I didn't get the camera well placed enough because it was so fast that I couldn't actually get a good shot of it. But they were walking in with their subs. And I know how happy people are. They're like, oh, I, I didn't open the sub in the car. I waited the whole time. And I'm going to eat here. Foil. And I just walked by Dan. And I said, watch this. And then Gavin was walking in front of him. I walked by Gav. But as I did, I reached down and I grabbed the sub out of his <laughs> hand. And then took a couple more steps in front of Gavin and then just punted it like a football <laughs> over the Got over it. the bathrooms. <laughs> and Gavin, Gavin was like no reaction at all. I was like, I guess my lunch has a footprint on it now. Because I'm not going out to get another one. <laughs> just <sighs> solid punt. Did you end up eating it? Yeah. Wow. Well, I, I took the bit where there was the hole and I just like pulled off all the bread from <laughs> Was it raining that day? I it, don't remember. It wasn't raining. I think it was like dirty on the floor. What kind of, what kind of sandwich was it? Uh, it was probably a BLT. Mm. Probably a nice. Or tuna. Gavin, Gavin eats tuna. No, oh. I wouldn't toast that. Was this no. near the old office? No, no it was here. No, it's here. Oh. Stage five. It, it got some height. Like, I, I was looking at my sandwich in the air for about two seconds. It was great. Because <laughs> it was a moment of like, ah, give me back my sandwich. And then boom, it just gets punted. I think I was like, you won't. Do oh. you He's go. so defensive of his food now. <laughs> the other day I saw him and Jeff walking into yeah. the building with hamburgers and I kind of made half a step over and just raised my hand a little bit and he's like he covered it up like a football he's like pulling it in you always worry when I flinch it's because of stuff like that you gotta eat well yeah you gotta protect your food I, I gotta protect it. my anus and protect my head and stuff I realized how much I ate off my kids plates <laughs> one day at dinner I was sitting there talking with JD and they were both like <laughs> like they were huddled <laughs> over their plates eating. like victims of war. <laughs> yeah, they were just like they wanted their food, they want me eating their fries or anything like that. It is insane how you can just eat forever. I can literally can eat forever. When I when I made him eat all this sushi, it was like airport? 24 pieces of sushi. He'd yeah, already least. he'd already eaten an entire meal. If and you like, yeah, oh. if you eat something fast enough, you could eat a, a large amount. I really would like to know. I wonder if I could eat longer than Michael can talk. That's mm -hmm. what I'm wondering. No. No. Impossible. No. That you would die. Yeah. Have and then make it sleep. I <laughs> talk about it all <laughs> no, the time. Have you ever seen that Japanese hamburger game? We should the, have the, you do the, the wheel? hamburger game. Yeah. The wheel thing? Oh, the uh, greatest yeah. or the most, most popular, popular, popular combo. combo? Only because the same guy kept coming up again and again. <laughs> right? Wasn't <laughs> yeah. that the deal? That was, that was just kind of random that, should, that one guy ate so many. You should go on Epic Meal Time and eat the food with them. Yeah, you could. I mean, that's like... 38,000 calories. I think they've stuff. done stuff with like 100,000 calories. Yeah, totally you can go back it. in time to whenever that was around. It's still around. Oh. I'm pretty sure they still no, make videos. Fun of it. No. Fun. Uh, the, they still make videos? I, I mean, I think so. I, I remember seeing something recently from them. Oh, okay. I don't know if they still do the same format, but they still make videos. Are you going to VidCon this year? Yeah. It's going to be a busy summer. When All is right. VidCon? June 23rd through the 26th. Got that Create a Summit too. And I was just talking with uh, Eric Cherry, the uh, gentleman who runs RTX Sydney and will be assisting us greatly with RTX London as London. well. And uh, I said, hey, I think I want to do another convention down in Australia that's not RTX, but just like like one. I'll just go by myself. To oh, like, like to attend? One convention, yeah. Because we, you know, we, we used to do more of those. and I, I was. We used to go to all the supernovas. Yeah. yeah. And those are fun because... Like, my buddy runs PAX, Yug. Um, I should say he runs it. He's one of the people who organizes it and <laughs> pulls it off. Um, he runs PAX Australia. I just said runs again. Uh, <laughs> and I was talking with him, and PAX just doesn't feel like a convention I would go to as a single appearance, you know? It's not... Mm -hmm. I, I've never been to PAX outside of a, the Rooster Teeth group, mm. you know? But Supernova, I, I could just go, you know? Just me. And it, that would be okay. You should time it to do an event in uh, New Zealand at the same time. Like time it around one of the Armageddons or something. That's a good idea. Hit up both. 
Get more bang for your buck. Good you for that. Yeah, from Jessica. Some... Jessica says we're sneaking around some outside. Chocolate. I don't know what that means. I see some people sneaking over there. Oh, they're they're million dollars butt backers. Yeah. Hey, Andrew. <laughs> butt backers. Is he over there? Yeah. He's still handshaking. What's up, Andrew? Can pop, pop in here and say hello. Don't Andrew. like go crazy though. He, he 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 fainted. Come on here. So this is Andrew. He's in town because we're filming Million Dollars Butt, and he is an extra, one of the people who contributed to the Welcome crowdfunding campaign the for here. You want to say hi? Say hi right here. Hello. There's only. <laughs> <laughs> That's really nice. Sorry. There's... There you go. You're right there. Oh, there with, you with go. With the red light. There you go. Hi. There's only Hi. tens of thousands of people watching. <laughs> Don't screw it up. <laughs> he wants no to let us play live, deal. too. Well, thank you very much for contributing to the yeah, Million Dollars Butt Card Game crowdfunding campaign. Thank you guys so much for making, you know, my time and my friend's time here. Just absolutely incredible, everything you guys do. And it's been, you know, one of the coolest opportunities I've had to get to meet you guys and be on set. So thank you. I like this guy. So yeah, you'll, get, like you'll get your $20 <laughs> later. He's off camera, so you can't hear him. But he said, Bernie, you're the most handsome. <laughs> <laughs> and Barb, you're almost as good as Jessica. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Right. Thanks, man. Yeah, we had, we had some you. fun. We were out. At, these were some pretty stupid scenarios. I would say this was one I did last night. We were out to like 8.30 at night, 9 at night, about an hour outside of Texas. Outside, outside of, Texas. of Texas. Outside of Austin. <laughs> outside of Austin. It's like, that's really far. I had to drive an hour outside of Austin to get to this place. And the reason why we did it was because we had one shot that had fire in it. And I can't go any deeper into it than that. So we had a whole crew was travel. Was it coming out of someone's butt again? No, it was just like we needed a fire marshal apparently to do this one shot that took all of 20 minutes maybe to do, but we had to drive an hour there and an hour back with a full production crew. Why don't you just do it in my, in my backyard where I, I do fire all the I time? I was, here's what I was told, Gavin, when I asked that question, I was told insurance. Mm. So I want to just fake fire. That's what I'd say. It's a million dollars butt. I mean, it's like, it's like RVB season one. All you got to do is eliminate the crew. Yeah, get rid of all these Shoot it yourself. <laughs> Ridiculous crew. That'll be so. easy. And then it's less official. You just we do shoot. It. We shoot uh, one with Jessica soon. Jessica Negri. Yeah, you're. Uh, so we shoot it in two different chunks. Yeah. We shoot the what we call the round table, and it's the sexy episode. It's Barbara is the rooster teeth. Oh, I guess Blaine's rooster teeth as well. But Barbara and Blaine and Miss Jessica Negri. Yep. I was trying to think of a scenario where I could, where I could get them both topless, but uh, couldn't think of one for that. So you couldn't think of a topless million dollars butt. No, not million one dollars butt. You can't wear a shirt for a year. But they would both take that. It wouldn't even be like fun to discuss. Mm. Blame I just spent like, a million dollars million for dollars? your shirts. That's it. That, you're done. <laughs> That's easy. Plus, you really need a scenario to get Blaine to take off his shirt. That's what I'm saying. I know, right? So, Blaine, there's a camera. <laughs> <Oops. Is> that, <laughs> a million dollars, but you have to live the rest of your life in your dishwasher. And he's like, so I'd have to have my shirt off. It's like, sure, yeah. absolutely. Why not? Oh, Speaking that's of a shirts, good one. You have to shower in a dishwasher. <laughs> Speaking of shirts, I would do that. I'm anyway. wearing a, a Jeff shirt that's going to come out tomorrow. Yeah. Apparently, it's a limited edition shirt. Uh, it goes on sale at 10 a.m. and once it's gone, it's gone. Where are your shirts? <laughs> once we sell out of them, they go on sabbatical for an indeterminate <laughs> amount of time. <laughs> I saw a comment today on a video that said Jeff's in more videos <laughs> on his sabbatical than he I was know. before. He is. I know. I think we just stacked. Oh, first members get a five percent discount. Yeah, by using uh, their go. code that by they have. And if you're Jeff, discount. you can get one for free. Yep. If you get one in time at 10 a.m. There's two two shirts. There's that oh, one and another hold Jeff one shirt. There's, a, there's another one with the... Is the other one also tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. There's They're, like two sparrows? Is that it? It's, yeah, there's two sparrows and there's like some cool line design on it too. Yeah. If you could breathe in a dishwasher, <laughs> would it work as a I shower? I can breathe in a dish dishwasher. I can do it. Why can't you oh. breathe in a dishwasher? Why wouldn't you be able to? Why can you breathe in a fridge? Yeah. Uh, you can't. I don't, yeah, well, it's like, there's an oxygen yeah. pump, you, is there? You can breathe in the fridge, but I mean, you'll eventually run out of fresh air. Yeah. You that's not, that's the same as not being able to breathe. <laughs> no, you can breathe, but you just got to pop the door open every now and then. <laughs> Gavin, get in your dishwasher and run a snorkel out the top <laughs> and then just shut that. And you're I good. think that'd be quite nice. Or it's just, so, be like, be like a steam or just room. use your shower. Yeah, but wouldn't it be cool to... You'd have to like the turn water, the heat off on your on your Yes, the water in the dishwasher is super hot. Why yeah, not it's kind of like burn your skin. A little shower cube. Oh. So my ex. I can't imagine showering like this. It get your asshole really clean. My ex Jordan, my kid's I, mom. She started a business where she <laughs> renovates like houses. Like that's her career now. She like will do this house flipping thing. She does shower cubes. And she, her thing that she does is she has these shower heads that I've never seen before. So she sends me pictures of them. There's a shower head she put in this one house where it's a normal shower head, but then there's this whole thing that goes down the wall. And it has jets the whole way down. Yeah, I've seen that before. Yeah, and like 
like these mats. So you're basically like in a car wash, you know. That getting, sounds it amazing. Comes yeah. at you from all angles. Because I'm always worried when having a shower that my butthole specifically isn't getting cleaned enough. And that's why a bath is good, because your butthole just stews in the water. Yeah, and the rest you know, of you stews yeah, in that butthole water. Well, then you can rinse off. You can rinse off. What's the point of taking a bath and then cleaning yourself? Your butthole, once you clean it, is clean, though. I mean, no, no, it's no, like but if you're stood up in a shower, your cheeks are clenched over. You it. could, uh, like, spread your cheeks a little and just yeah, get I mean, in there. Like, you make the up motion like this. You're like, you're opening a theater <laughs> Because the microphone's in the way. <laughs> Cracking an egg. <laughs> I'm also never, like, it, I'm doing it to myself, so it's not this way, it's th that way. So you're sat down in the shower? No, I'm standing up, but my butt is behind me. Oh, Look who's over here. Oh, what? my can we, who, do we have a mic? Can we get a mic? Who is it? Okay, Jessica. Oh. Jessica. Oh, the TV's in the way, I can't see anything. Oh, oh hey, jeez. Come on in, come on I didn't in. even see you, I just saw that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see the most conspicuous person you possible. So good. So what are you doing back there? You're shooting, uh, we got a mic for you. Gus, you want to grab that mic and hand uh, it to Jess? and Mike are over there. Uh, Darshell and Mike, Mike. So I just called you Jess. Does anybody call you Jess? Or is it just always Jess? Jessica? Jessica? Jesse? You're, you're weird because you're one of the <laughs> <Thanks>. people <laughs> that I don't often just call them by their first name. I just call you Jessica Negri. Like, yeah, okay, you can do that. I, I used to think your first last name first name. name. I did that. I did that in a, <laughs> Celine Dion. I made a Celine Snapchat Dion. yesterday. No, Celine Dion. Where I, I was like, I shot with Darshell Jessica Negri today, and I was, I was like, I don't know why I'm saying her Barbara full Dunkelman. name. Barbara Dunkelman. I did that a couple times to you too. Barbara Dunkelman. If her yeah. name was Celine yeah. Dion, like Celine thought, Dion Stevens. Yeah, I thought it was Celine Dion, and then she had a last name, and I was like, okay, cool. I just wanted to come say hi, and then I'm Celine like, Dion Rochambeau. Did you see her fairy pictures? Oh, I've seen Barbara's. I have seen uh, proofs of them, like one or two like little things that you Darsh guys put out. Darshal does such a good job. Yeah. They're over there. Is, it, is Mike over there? Yeah, Mike's over there too. It's so weird. It's like I, Mike's been in town. Mike from Filthy Casual. He's been in town this whole week, and I haven't been able to see him the whole week. It's, it's like, right there. He's right I know. there. I know what I'm saying. Hello. Right, he's right there. <laughs> he's invisible to Why haven't me. you been able to see him? Because Million Dollars bought last night, and then uh, I think they got in on Tuesday, and we were doing something on Thursday. What's today? Today's Thursday. Thursday. Okay, yeah. Some, I don't know what I was doing Tuesday. It's been crazy since we got back from Washington. Did you immersion? Gavin, yeah, it was immersion. Gavin and I have what, jammed can like- Can I see your lips? Oh, no, no. Tuesday was, t t Tuesday was JD's birthday. It's I went out with JD on his like birthday. It went down. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like right, tenderized but... flesh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Overized. Mm. Aw. All right, cool. I'm going to leave you alone. I'm going to disappoint. <laughs> Bye, Jess. That grossed agree. me out, so I'm leaving. Bye. <laughs> Bye, guys. It's pretty gross. Bye. Be funny she like just... jumped off the stage. How she had that much energy? She's no, in character. That's Jessica all the time. All the time. She's always at a ten. I don't know how she does it. She's always in like that super mode. The um, on. maybe she sleeps for like eighteen hours a, a night. So I'm getting a lot of comments about my watch on the uh, on the Twitter feed. This watch is. I started wearing this watch again because I gave up on my Apple Watch. Gus made fun of me. One day I was try I had stuff in my hands and I was trying to look at my watch and it wouldn't turn on so I was like trying to tap it with my nose <laughs> like this and Gus just goes yeah that's you look great doing that what a <laughs> what modern a advancement of technology for you and I was like I just, I it's like you with the socks thing I just felt so bad about it I went home and just like I'm not wearing my Apple Watch anymore and I really recognize that that thing is inconvenient as fuck yeah Why? charging a watch I'm done I got too much shit to charge now but you take it off every night don't you <sighs> yeah the table charges it nah I would like travel and then I gotta pack another cord. If Sucks it, for travel. If it had a lightning thing or whatever, good. No, can't take it. I'm not doing it anymore. Anyway, so I started wearing this watch again. And I don't wear this watch often, but I've had it for a really long time. You've had that watch forever. Yeah, this watch was um, when Red vs. Blue took off. Uh, this was probably like in the first seven years. This is the one thing I bought myself was oh. this red and blue watch. And, uh, oh, wow, so it's really old. What's that? I said it's really old. Yeah, no, yeah, I bought it in 05, I want to say. Maybe I think that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That like was like a, a gift to yourself. Yeah. Like, I, like you guys I make fun it. of me for Teslas and stuff like that, but I drove my pickup that I had at my telecom job. I drove that for the first five years of Red vs. Blue, <laughs> then bought another pickup and drove that one until what, like 2012, mm -hmm. and then, no, 2013, and then bought the Tesla. Who's then. making fun of you for having a Tesla? You guys were just work. Like, buy me a Tesla. Buy me a Tesla. No, I'm just no, asking. That's not making fun. That's asking for stuff. Yeah. No, you catch shit. Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody made fun. Everyone was like, man, that's a wicked car. I want one. Yeah. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. It's I like see when... you driving all the time now, by the way. I know, right? Because of that, like, what you changed it, the yellow car. I see you everywhere now. I got an immediate lesson in that right away. I kind of like it because it's almost like in GTA, you see that those unique cars. Or you're like 
what's that girl's name with the pink car in LA? Angeline. You're Angeline. I want to be the Angeline of Austin. <laughs> That's what I want to be. But uh, did I tell you guys a story about the when I took Teddy out for his birthday to Cheesecake Factory? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. so I, I was at Cheesecake Factory with Teddy, and three very nice people walked up to us, our table, right in the middle of dinner. And they said, you're Bernie Burns. And I said, yes, I am. Hello, nice to meet you. And they said, this was day two with the car. They said, we saw your car in the parking lot, and so we tried to find you somewhere in this mall, in the complex. Oh, And wow. there was like probably two dozen stores, one of these outdoor yeah. malls. And it was weird because it was like, so you looked for me in the Cheesecake Factory? I was eating at Cheesecake Factory, but I was I was insulted <laughs> that they looked for me in Cheesecake Factory. You don't know how many other places I bet they, they went, went to. Straight there. Yeah. <laughs> they found me. Teddy loves Cheesecake Factory. They have macaroni and cheese everything. So Teddy just Ooh, gets. Do they have macaroni and cheesecake? They have no, <laughs> they don't. They have, <laughs> they have deep fried. The scariest thing about Cheesecake Factory is they put the calorie amounts on every meal. You literally can't eat anything there that's under 900 calories. And their menu is like a book. It is. I fucking hate that place. Do you? Too many options. Oh, that's Gavin's problem, yeah. It's like, I, I want a place that makes something good, not that makes a billion different things. They make cheesecake good. They make, uh... <laughs> they have a billion different cheesecakes. They make standard macaroni and cheese. They make fried macaroni and cheese, which are like little balls of fried macaroni and cheese. And then they have a macaroni and cheeseburger. What happened to the macaroni and cheese? This is like four plates to me. What happened to the mac and cheese at the Alamo? Oh, the green chili mac and cheese? It's dog shit. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's like terrible slop. now. I've it's... heard people complain about that. It's not the... crusty anymore. It's not got, it's just like goop. It's also smaller. Do you ever get Gash. the buffalo cauliflower bites there? No. Dude, it's why I go. Fucking good. It's why I go. I, 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 I've, I've entered an Alamo renaissance going, trying to go there as often as possible. You're going, they don't have it, and you're like, I'm oh, leaving. No. At one time, they told me we don't have that. Jeez. I got upset. Stuff's so good. It's the just the cauliflower pizza, buffalo, like fried cauliflower buffalo on it. Oh, so good. The pizza at the new Alamo is delicious. I don't know if you guys have been there or tried the pizza there yet, but it's amazing. I went to go see Logan there. Yeah. Like they had their kind of soft opening. So I went like for the same reason Gus was interested in the plane. He's like, this is, I'm going to be the first butt sitting in this chair for this Alamo. I'm going to fill it with farts. I, I also went there for the staff training. They give you 50% off your meal. That's true. They yeah, do. Did you great? spend 300,000 miles to get your butt? <laughs> no, I did not do that. I, I didn't did spend any miles that. either. I mean, I, I've wasted miles before when I tried to buy something and then I had to change my flight and they just wouldn't let me. And that happens sometimes with when you buy a ticket. It just feels less egregious when you when it's cash because, mm -hmm. you know, it's just like that's a normal course of business. And uh, but when it's your miles, like your personal miles, it just feels like, oh, my God. I it's know, like they won't I, refund you their I own fake long. currency. Yeah. But somehow it's like it's more because it takes so much longer to yeah. build. For the up. record, I wish I could have gone on that flight. That would yeah. have been fucking awesome. It would have been an amazing. It would have been worth even 300, if I had spent three hundred thousand. I would have absolutely done that because they would have flown me from Austin to Chicago. Then I would have gotten into the Polaris Lounge in Chicago. Then flown Chicago to San Francisco. Spent a night there. Then flown San Francisco to Austin. But you can do that today. All, but on that plane, covered? no. Also? Yeah, they would they would pay for it all. But it would be the first time that plane flew ever Again, with, with passengers on it's it. It's an experience, once in a lifetime experience. So, yeah, but to me, the 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 fiftieth time it flies is just as new as the first, really. It's not going to be worn down. It's not going to be messy or anything. Yeah, but I don't know. There's something about it. It's when it's like the seven thousandth time it's flown that it's looking rickety. You know Gus's love of airplanes. I love and planes. And things like we, that. We, yeah. Gavin and I, when we flew over to one on seven four seven Vienna, we were a little concerned because we were booked on Austria Airlines, and Gav looked them up. Just said we had no idea what this airline was like. They had two stars. There was some place <laughs> it was one star. So we had a lot of just trepidation about what kind of plane we're getting on. Probably the nicest flight I've ever been on. We were lucky enough to be flown in business class. That was that, probably a big part of it. No, that's definitely true. That's definitely the true. The economy might have been. Yeah. But actually, the nicest plane I ever flew on was one leg of the Amazing Race. We flew from Georgia to Dubai. We flew on an Emirates plane. If I could fly Emirates on a regular basis, I would totally fly it based on I've never experience. flown Emirates. I've always wanted to fly it. I it was pretty fucking it. nice. Here's Thank what you. you'll love about it. None of the bathrooms are on the same floor as the seats. You go down to a different level, and that's where all the bathrooms oh, are. That's, yep. that's cool. Yeah. And Does it was it like, smell like poo down there? It's all the same planes, right? So they just obviously designed their planes to be... They probably just ate into cargo space. Maybe so. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, yeah, like you're almost like in a locker room in a weird way. I, uh, I've got someone who's uh, friends with me on Snapchat. I don't know how you say that. But he works at an airport, and he regularly sends me Snapchats from like inside cargo holes of planes. Or like pictures of planes, like he works ground crew. And are you allowed like to? The planes I think you're allowed up. to do that, right? It's not like a security. I don't know. Hazard. That's why I'm not saying what airport uh, or okay. anything. So I don't know if like that would get him in trouble. But it's really cool. Like he'll send me like photos, like the inside of uh, the cargo on a 
um, like a, an Embraer. And they're like, oh yeah, I, I never thought about. I guess I, I never even think of what that. like an actual cargo space on any plane looks like. Yeah, it's really cool. So, huh. it, but you know me, I like planes. So I'm, I'm totally into that kind of stuff. I watched Get Out. What did you think? I also I liked saw it. Get Out this week. I liked it. I thought Get Out was really good. It was. It's one of my. I was worried that it was because everyone. I was worried it'd be too hyped. I got too hyped for it. I don't think it was hyped enough. To oh, me, it felt like a, to it. me it felt like a long episode of Black Mirror. That's what it felt like to me. Was racist? Wasn't that guy in Black Mirror? <laughs> no pun intended. Who? Yeah, the main character, the protagonist, was in Black Mirror. Oh, I've is seen he? him in he a was lot in of the stuff million on point uh, one. Okay, I've seen him in a lot of English TV. Yeah. I assume he's English. I think he is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They don't hire Americans to be. <laughs> another, I mean, it's, it's it's really true. And the girl from Girls. When Ashley, when she went down to Australia. She was regularly turned down for hosting jobs because she had an American accent. Where, whereas in the U.S., if an Australian applies, it's like, oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. She has, she sounds Australian. We'll put her in the in the hosting gig. And they rejected hardcore in other places. They don't want American accents because they get so much of it in the content they import from America. Well, in this case, it was a British actor doing an American accent. Well, I'm saying it's like he was saying, I guess he's a British actor. I said, if you've seen him on British TV, he's probably a British oh. actor. They're yeah. not going to be plucking Americans gotcha. to go work on British TV. So, you All know, right. unless it's the show Friends at the import or something like mm-hmm. that. Well, I think it's uh, about time to wrap up. You're you're the time to wrap up. It's the time. Feels right. shorter now, doesn't it? Like, yeah, seriously, this is time. a global audience that watches this. Is there anybody who watches uh, a person on television or in movies in their country that has an American accent that we don't consider famous in America? I'd be curious to know if there's anybody that exists like that. I literally like, can't like think a, of a single person. Like a reverse John Oliver? Or like David Hasselhoff got big in Germany. But we all know who David Hasselhoff is. Right. But it was funny to us that David Hasselhoff was big in, in Germany. But there must be people in other countries that are Americans that are famous. I, and we just have we I, think I saw, I, saw uh, I think it was on Vice. It was on Vice News Tonight. I saw a story about a, an American guy who has broken into the Mexican Wrestling League, the Luchadors, by playing like this kind of like parody of Trump. <laughs> Really? Yeah, and he walk, walks around with an American flag with a photo of Trump on it yeah. and fights all the Mexican wrestlers and everyone's booing at him. He plays the heel, heel down there. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like he's found like this, like his calling, like his thing. He is super popular in Mexican wrestling because he plays this character. Can't wait till the day he pulls his mask off and it's Greg Miller. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Probably be. All right, well, it's time to wrap up. So thanks everyone for watching. Hope you've had a good first week and uh, please do not give us 10,000 by Monday so you don't have to watch our not gonna happen. RBB episode. Not going to happen. I love you. Bye.